So then, let's get this M20 cylinder head from the 1979 Barn Find BMW E12 520 rebuilt. And I guess I should start with updating you guys with what has happened with this thing. So, probably looked completely different to the last time you saw this. Probably looked filthy, covered in grime, and yeah, a little bit worse for wear. So, as I mentioned in the previous video you will have saw on this engine, I was gonna send this off to my dad and he took it into his workplace, gave it a good clean up on the shot blaster. And as you can see, it looks immaculate now. It looks so, so good. You wouldn't know that this is a 44 year old cylinder head. It looks so, so good. Of course, cleaned up the uh, camshaft gear and this pipe and a couple of other little bits and pieces as well. Has it got rid of the damage on this uh, cylinder head though? No, of course it hasn't. He has, however, gave the camshaft bearings a bit of a polish up. They look a lot better than what they did before. I've tried the camshaft in here. Moves a lot uh, freer than it did before, of course. But of course, we still have the scoring in here. And it's pretty much the same story for the camshaft as well. Again, it looks a hell of a lot better. You know, it should turn smoothly now that it's been polished up. But yeah, we still do have some quite deep scoring in here. Do I think it's going to be a problem? I mean, to be honest, like, I think it will run. Um, I mean, that was my initial uh, sort of thoughts. We could potentially be down on oil pressure because we have an increased clearance. You know, the engine may not produce the same power as it should, but will it run? I don't see a problem. I don't see why it shouldn't run with this slight bit of increased oil clearance. Of course, I've gave the entire valve train, so the uh, rocker shafts, the rocker arm assemblies, the valves, the springs, the uh, spring seats, the spring hats. I gave that all a thorough clean up because the last thing we want to do is put this thing back together, have some grit where you don't want it, and then, yeah, it uh, basically causes this amount of damage again. So. Yeah, what have I done then with the cylinder head? Because it was shot blasted, of course, not on the face. That hasn't been um, shot blasted. That was fine anyway. You'll see when I flip this over. Um, but yeah, I have thoroughly cleaned this. You know, I've pressure washed it like two, three, four times. Got well in the oil galleries, in all, all of the oil feeds. I'm confident that there's no uh, grit or dirt in this thing. Of course, you never... Uh, will know but yeah I've gave it multiple cleans with a pressure washer that I've gone inside and out with a uh, can of brake cleaner and yeah same story uh, for the valve train as well and we should now be ready for the rebuild of this cylinder head so we will begin with the lapping of the valves of course it's the first thing you want to do pretty much when rebuilding a cylinder head we have uh, replaced two of the valves so this is one here this is one of the intake valves that we replaced and i think this is the yeah this is the new exhaust valves but in general like the valves the old valves they've came up like brand new anyway so yeah no complaints there really of course we had to replace two of them though because I think is either the intake or the exhaust one was bent and then the other one was completely snapped off so yeah two new valves rest is good to go I think oh, we had to replace two of the collets to the valve retainers whatever you want to call them um, because they disintegrated but yeah should be good to go so we are gonna get this head flipped over and begin the lapping of the valves. Before we do get started though, do me a massive favor, give this video a thumbs up, really does help me out and it shows your appreciation. So yeah, like I said, we will flip this cylinder head over. As you can see, the face is so, so good. I have checked it with this straight edge yeah, no um, discrepancies there. I don't think it's, you know, the head's been warped or anything like that. The head gasket was near on perfect, so I'm happy to proceed. I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to skim this head or anything. seems that there's a lot of people that when they are rebuilding an engine, they just 
skim the head and face a block for no apparent reason. If you do that, you're going to need a thicker head gasket and all the rest of it. So if you don't need doing, then don't do it. But yeah, if you've never seen me lap valves before, I will uh, I will go over how to do it, but I'm going to try and not bore you. I'm not. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then you'll kind of get the idea, because it is a very um, tedious and potentially boring job. So, of course, make sure you have the correct valve for the correct cylinder. So, I mean, I guess in theory, as you are lapping them in, it doesn't really matter. But because we haven't replaced valve guides, and you know valves and the valve guides um, wear together. I want to kind of keep everything the same. So this is the front of the engine. So this is going to be cylinder one and that's going to be cylinder six. I have wrote on here which is which. So this is exhaust cylinder one. So that will be for here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on here just so it goes into the guides a little bit easier. So I'm just going to dip the valve stem in some oil. And we will get our valve grinding stick. Just pop it onto the valve face. That should be on there then. And then I'm going to get our coarse grade grit. And you only want a tiny, tiny bit of this. You're just going to apply a very small amount to the valve lip itself. So the, the part that makes contact with the valve seat. There we go then. That's plenty on there of the coarse grit. Now these valves, again, they shouldn't need a hell of a lot of lapping in it should be quite quick but when it comes to the new valves they'll probably take a little bit longer so I mean you've probably seen it before at this point essentially all you're going to do is just go back and forth and you know when to stop because there is an audible change so if you go back and forth it'll kind of sound very rough and then it'll get smooth and at that point you're pretty much done you then move on to the fine grade stuff so it's a good idea to rather than just keep going back and forth you know give it a good tap just to make sure that the grit is actually getting down onto the valve seat itself so that's already changed Yeah, that's already gone pretty quiet. Just had to do it a good few times, just for good measure. Well, there we go. We then take the valve out, try not to get any grit on the stem itself. Of course, you're going to clean this off anyway. I'm going to clean the entire valve up and then get it ready for the fine grade stuff. I'm going to give the valve seat itself a good wipe out. This tub's like half empty, it's brand new. But again, you don't need much of this stuff. It's just a little bit on your finger and just smear it around the edge of the valve. I am by no means a professional, you know, I don't build engines as my job. Um, but I have rebuilt an engine before and that kind of went successful, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, I guess. Yeah, and just make sure the valve stem itself is nice and oiled up. Drop that into the valve guide. Get the stick in place. And then again, we just grind away until we get it virtually silent. Pitch is already changing. There we go. That should be one valve 
lapped in. And if you've done your job correctly, you should then have a nice, new, smooth ring around the base of your valve. But yeah, as I mentioned, that's one done. It's now time to do the other 11. So then, as you can see, all 12 valves, that is six exhaust valves, six intake valves, now lapped, seated, whatever you want to call it, they're all now done. We can remove these valves to give the head a final clean with some brake cleaner and then we will begin the rebuild and we'll start I think with the valve stem seals. So then as you can see all of the valves now removed. Again just going to give it a final clean with some brake cleaner. And so with the head now clean for the final time, we'll get on to installing the new valve stem seals. This is what they look like. I don't know why they kind of separate them in the box. They're the exact same part. There's no different sizes for the exhaust or the intake. At least I don't think there is. Uh, it comes with these tubes as well. That's just if you want to, I guess, install them with the valves installed. Um, of course, the valves aren't installed, so we don't need to use them. So it's just going to be a case of dropping these down over the valve guides and then just tapping them home. I'll probably find a socket, suitable socket that goes over the top of that. And then, yeah, just give it a little tap until it's fully seated. Okay, so I have an 11 millimeter socket. This seems to fit quite nicely over the valve stem seal, so this is what I'm going to knock it in with. But yeah, nothing really to it. Let's make sure the valve guide is nice and clean. And then just give it a good few taps. There we go, that's one installed. Nice and easy, really not a whole lot to it. And we'll just get all of the others installed now. There we go then, that should be all 12 valve stem seals now installed. All nice and easy stuff. Now of course we can now flip the cylinder head back over. Because it's now time to reinstall the valves. We do want to use a bit of oil on the valve stems themselves. We don't want these to go and dry. That's all the exhaust valves now back in. We get the intake valves back in as well. And that is all of the intake valves now back in. Then we can flip the head over again. because it is now time to begin reinstalling the valve springs held in by the valve collets or valve retainers, whatever you want to call them. To do this, there's a couple of different ways you can do this depending on which, depending on which valve compression tool you have. You know, you may have to get this uh, raised up on some blocks. You may just be able to do it with this flat down on a bench. I think the easiest way for me is to actually have the head on its side like so and I should be able to get the valve compression tool over like that. 
So then, this is the valve spring compressor that I use. It's only a relatively cheap tool, but it does the job. If you are doing these day in, day out, you're probably going to have a slightly better tool than this because it's not the best, but like I said, it's cheap and it does the job. If you want to get one of these, I'll leave them. I'll leave the kit down uh, you know, in the link in the description. So feel free to check that out. But yeah, basically when it comes to installing the valve, springs basically you just want to get the whole assembly I'll just dip it in some oil make sure I've got the correct one so we are cylinder 6 and it's an intake valve which is this one just here I'll place that over the spring so I'll just say I'll, pr I'll place the spring over the spring. No, I'll, pl I'll place the spring over the valve stem. And then we will get our tool in place. So essentially there's two cups, you could call them cups. I don't know what else you'd call them, to be honest. Uh, this one goes on the valve face itself. So on the you know the valve face the round part of the valve um, you don't really want it to go onto the uh, cylinder head especially the um, mating surface um, because yeah you can scratch it up so yeah make sure it goes on the valve face itself and then this part here this will go onto the top hat on the spring so forget the top hat here that will essentially sit there like so and it should compress the spring enough to where you can get these valve retainers or collets in place so yeah we should be good with this just going to wind these in once you have it in position check you have it in position but then you can start tightening this down So then once you have compressed the spring enough to where you can visibly see the three grooves in the top of the valve stem, you should then be able to get the two collets in place. And of course it's up to you how you want to do that, if you want to try and do it by hand, if you want to use a pair of pliers, if you want to use a screwdriver, I tend to try and use all three of those methods. But you want to try and avoid dropping these because, yeah, very small, very easy to lose. That should be one in position. So then, as you can see, both of the collets, valve retainers, are now in place. And I found that it's easier to do this with the with the head flat on a surface or in my case kind of half leaning over the edge of the workbench. I think I found this last time actually trying to do it on its side is just too awkward. Gravity kind of works against you whereas if it's pretty much face down then it kind of works with you so yeah I found that a hell of a lot easier. Now I don't know what it's going to be like once I get to like the middle valves um, I'm probably going to have to get this up on some blocks of wood I don't know yet but yeah you basically get the gist don't you you know you can see how I have installed those collets there it's now just a case of winding this off the spring will uncompress and that is one valve done. And the valve spring should look something a little like that. So now I'm just going to do the exact same for the other 11 valves and then we will move on to the next step. Now then, that is all of the valve springs now in position. And to be honest, wasn't that painful. Once you get in a routine, like I said, I found it a hell of a lot easier having the 
head flapped rather than trying to do it on its side. Um, yeah, once you get into a routine, it's quite quick really. You do one, move across to the next, do that, move across to the next. And yeah, if I had to say how long it took me to do all of these, I'd say half an hour, 30 minutes, something like that. But yeah, with the valves now fully into position, they're going nowhere. So I guess next is to get the camshaft installed. Now to install the camshaft, really only one way. It can only go through the front. There should be a blind plug on the back anyway. I still have to install that. We'll do that once we're done. But yeah, just gonna give the camshaft a final clean with some brake cleaner. Just uh, you know, clean off any dust that may have got on there since we gave it a thorough clean. And then we will use some engine assembly lube. This will prevent any dry starts, basically. You can just use regular engine oil, but this stuff is thick and yeah, it just ensures it's not gonna go anywhere on the initial startup. So I'm gonna put this on the camshaft bearings themselves and I'll put it all on the camshaft bearing journals as well. So we should now be nice and lubed up. The camshaft as well. Now we can carefully slide it into position. I've just put the bolt in the end of the camshaft. I'm just going to rotate it a couple of times. And that is moving so smoothly now. It's like butter. Let's make sure the bearings are nice and lubed up. I guess I may as well now get the camshaft cover plate installed actually. So as I mentioned, I have a brand new one of these. The old one just disintegrated when I removed it. So yep, brand new, genuine BMW part. These are very rare now. They are, yeah, quite hard to come by. I did get it from the dealership, but it had to, you know, I had to wait a while to get it. You then have a small O-ring that goes around the inside here and then you have the camshaft seal itself just went with genuine owl ring for both of the seals it's not something you want to leak but yeah let's get them installed into this cover and then we can get the cover installed over the end of the camshaft so the o-ring just lubed it up this is going to go on nice and easy and then this seal i believe that ha that has to be tapped in place. To be honest, it's uh, going in quite nicely. Don't need to tap this in place. Probably helps that I have a brand new cover so it's not corroded or anything. Yeah, that's gone in quite easily. Should be bottomed out. Should now just be a case of sliding this over the end of the camshaft. I've lubed up the inner edge of the seal. There's some engine assembly lube on here as well. Of course, just line the bolt holes up. Again, that's going over quite nicely. I'm going to get the bolts in place and it should pull itself in. There we go then, that's that camshaft cover now installed. Just taught both of the M6 bolts down to 10 newton meters. That should be plenty enough for them. And I've just went ahead and installed the 
cam gear as well of course I haven't torqued the bolt down yet I'll probably do that when the head is actually back on to the engine block but yeah need this to be installed so I can rotate the camshaft easily to install the rock shafts and the rock arms now when it comes to installing the rock shafts and the rock arms pretty self-explanatory you basically just need to slide it in from I guess you can probably slide it in from either end but I'm going to do it from this end I think so the back of the head and yeah I think the rocker shafts I think they're the exact same part I have kept them in the same orientation as you know what I took them out of so this is this was the exhaust one and this was the intake one I don't think they can go the same way around though so I mean I'll just put them side by side as you can see we have a oil feed hole there one there and as you can see they are slightly staggered I'm guessing this is so that it covers both of the cam lobes if you was to put them both the exact way around you'd find that you will have half of your cam lobes not getting any oil and then half of them will be getting double the amount of oil so yeah make sure you have them the correct way around so that they are covering all of the cam lobes but yeah I guess we should just get on with it I'm gonna give this a last thorough clean and then we can sl start sliding the rocker shaft in place and then you know get it so far slide a rocker arm on push it through again slide another rocker arm on push it through again slide another rocker arm on now because the rocker arms are going to make contact with the top of the valves and once we start rotating the cam to get it all the way through we are going to start opening some valves so we're either going to have to elevate the head or tip it on its side i don't know what i'm going to do yet i don't know what i'm going to find easier but yeah you don't want to do this on a flat surface because you're just going to be basically forcing the valve against your work surface so yeah, I guess enough talking. Let's just get on and uh, get cracking. Okay, so I'll just do one side at a time. Just gonna give the rocker shaft. These have already had a good thorough clean inside and out anyway, of course, making sure all of the oil ways are clean. Now, I'm gonna apply some assembly lube to the bearings. Should be more than enough. Then I can begin sliding the rock shaft in place. Of course, you need to make sure that you are installing the rock arms as you go. And I'm going to make sure a nice bit of assembly loop on those as well. And for those that are wondering, I have elevated the head slightly. I've just put two steel blocks, one on either side just to give us enough clearance for the valves and <laughs> straight away I'll put the rocker arm the wrong way around it's a good start wasn't it so of course this flat part here that makes contact with the camshaft lobe and I'm not too concerned about getting it in the correct position to begin with because these, as we go, it's, it's going to start getting tight. So that's when we're going to have to start rotating the camshaft. Just take our time. I've just realised something. Ignore me about what I said with the rock shaft supplying oil to the camshaft lobe. That's complete nonsense. That's what the oil squirter rail is for. That's for the camshaft lobes, I believe. The holes on the rocker shafts, they are, they are to supply the oil to the bearings on the rock arms. The big ones, they supply, well, they basically take the oil um, to the bearings for the rocker shafts. The small holes are to supply the rocker arm 
bearings with the oil. Hope that makes sense. It's still right what I said. You need to have one one way and one the other way because of course the rocket arms are staggered. They're not directly opposite each other. So you do need to make sure you have them the correct way around. So I was kind of right with that, but yeah, the oil feeds from the rocket arms. I don't think they feed the camshaft. I think that's what this uh, squirter rail is for. Just thought I would clear that up just to stop any confusion. Okay, so here's how we're currently looking. As you can see, four rocket arms now in place. I think it is easier to locate the rocket arms one by one. I think I did say that you can probably do them all at the end. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's probably you know just as well that you do centralize them over the valves as you go along because yeah you you could end up damaging them if you tried to force them all and force them all across at the end so yeah i'm just going to do one by one rotate the camshaft get it in position move on to the next one and then so on so yeah just two more to go and uh then that's the intake rocker shaft and rocker arms done I'm going to have to rotate the camshaft for this one, so valves will open. Slide that across, make sure it's centralised, and they're all, they all should be. That should just be a case of knocking the rocker shaft all the way through now. And there we go then, that is the intake rocker shaft and six rocker arms now in place, all centrally located over the top of the valves. I'm happy with that, I'm not going to move it anymore. Time to move on to the exhaust side now. Of course, just the exact same process. I'm sure I've made this sound way more complicated than it needs to be. Again, probably me just over explaining things as usual. Um, but no, it's literally just a case of sliding this in. Make sure you have the oil feed holes in the position where the uh, rocker arms are going to go. Because like I said, that, that feeds the oil to the rocker arm bearings. Make sure they line up with the correct camshaft lobes. And then of course, make sure they uh, sit on the top of the corresponding valves. Another quick thing to point out as well, try and make sure that you have, if you have a look in here, there is a slot in the end of the rock shaft that needs to be there because this bracket, plate, whatever you want to call it, this sits in there like so and just secures them in place. So make sure that this is on the inside of the on the inside of the rocket arms so that can just sit down like there and secure them in position but yeah enough talking let's get the exhaust one installed and then I think we can begin to wrap this job up so as you can see the exhaust rocker shaft and rocker arms are all now in place. I've also installed the retaining clips on the intake side. Um, I'll show you exactly how to do it on the exhaust side. Very, very easy to do. And it's kind of why it's important as well to get the rocker shaft in the correct orientation, not only to get this holding plate bracket in place, but also to get the retaining clips as well in place. You'll see there is grooves on the rock shaft and this end just slots right down into there. Very, very simple and easy to do and it's yeah, once it's done you know that you know that the rocker arm itself is in the correct position. So we'll just install this one here. Just push it into the groove and there you go. You know the rocker arm is in the correct position then. So we'll get the other ones installed as well. 
Just got to slide that one over slightly. This one as well, and there we go. That's all those retaining clips installed. We should now be able to install this securing plate at the end as well. So everything is in the correct position. So yep. Let's give this a few taps. There we go, that's that knocked down into position. Can't go any further. Okay, so here's how we're currently locking. All of the valve train is now securely in position. A couple of little bits we need to install, just these rubber caps that they just go on the end. I don't know if you are supposed to silicone these in or if they just stop oil because these are 40 odd years old. I am gonna put a small amount of silicon around these and just slide them in place. Also have a new uh, blind plug to go in there. And then the original water pipe as well. Not too sure if I'm gonna silicone this on or just make up a gasket for it. That goes on the bottom just there. So then I have went ahead and installed the new blind plug. Just tap that in with a large socket that's seated all the way home. I have installed the coolant pipe on the back. In the end, just use some of this uh, L-ring sealant. It's good for high temperature stuff, so it should be absolutely fine for that. Probably better than the paper gasket that you would install anyway. Took down the two bolts, I believe the M6 bolts, so no more than 10 newton meters on those. I have installed these small uh, rubber bungs that go in the end of the rocker shafts put a little bit of sealant around them whether or not that'll do anything um, I don't know it's not a pain just to take the rocker cover off if there is a leak there anyway so I can address that at a later date I guess the only thing now left is the oil squirter which I have thoroughly cleaned inside and out made sure brake cleaner was spraying from all of the jets so yeah it's literally just a case of dropping that in there and on the other side as well threading that in and then I'm just going to snug it down with a spanner and we should be good to go and with the oil squirter bar tube whatever you want to call it now installed just a eight millimeter spanner to tighten them to down don't go crazy it's not something you want to break but yeah with that now installed the head is officially now rebuilt and very happy with this really it wasn't difficult once you got once i got my head around a couple of things it literally just went together um, pretty simple most time consuming thing of course whenever you are doing something like this is the cleaning you want to make sure that you thoroughly clean everything you don't want any grit inside of the engine especially when it comes to the bearing surfaces so if you are doing this yourself if you or if you are doing something like this yourself take extra time to clean things clean them again clean them again and then clean them again and then clean them again yeah you cannot clean enough of course make sure you have some oil or engine assembly lube on all of the bearings and i've put it on the cam lobes themselves as well so we shouldn't have any uh, dry start issues but yeah pretty much all ready to go back onto the car a little bit of work still to do on that before we get to that stage so i need to put the oil pan the oil pump and everything back in that is all still in bits back here but 
that's for another video I guess but yeah M20 cylinder head now officially rebuilt okay then so another job done another step closer to getting this barn find bmw e12 up and running i want to thank you all for watching hopefully you've all enjoyed this video please give it a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i will see you all in that next one